Israel rescued four hostages from central Gaza over the weekend. It's the largest hostage rescue operation since the war with Hamas began. And it comes at a price. The Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says at least 274 people were killed in the hostage rescue. Israel, on the other hand, saying there are no more than 100 casualties. All this says U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Cairo as Washington seeks to increase pressure on Hamas and Israel to reach a ceasefire hostage deal in Gaza. And here to discuss it all for us is ABC News foreign correspondent Tom Sufi Brerich. He is in Tel Aviv with the latest on this story. So, Tom, what's the latest on the ground and what can you tell us about that operation? Uh, DeMarco, this was a massive military operation. We're told by the IDF that hundreds of troops moved into that area of central Gaza in the days before the operation was launched. We're also to told by the IDF that special ops forces went in disguised close to two buildings where the four hostages were being held. Uh, we're then told that they were moved in and we, we saw Israeli airstrikes into that area. We've seen incredible video of a really kind of brutal attack uh, in that area. The IDF saying they were being attacked from all sides. Uh, they were then helicoptered out of Gaza, brought to this medical center uh, just outside Tel Aviv, the Sheba Medical Center. Three of the male hostages are still being treated here, and I've just spoken uh, to the mother of one of those uh, hostages, one of those male hostages, Amog Mirjan, uh, his mother, Orit, uh, speaking to me just a few minutes ago. All the hostages, the 120 hostages who are in Gaza, must, m must go home must come home and feel what I feel. Yesterday, I slept all night with a smile. What a big relief. That's what I want to happen for all the families of the hostages. That's, that's my, uh, my dream. Mm, so many families waiting for that moment that mm -hmm. that mother got to experience. We also have to talk about what Hamas is saying in all of this. Hamas is calling the operation a massacre and claims that three hostages, including an American citizen, are among the dead. What do we know right now? Uh, Eva, we don't have information to confirm that claim that other hostages might have died in the operation, including potentially Americans. Uh, the White House has not commented on that, uh, has no information to back that up. Uh, the IDF has also not commented on that. What we do know is that the Israeli military used incredible firepower. We've seen the airstrikes in that area. Now, the IDF is saying that they were coming under fire from all sides uh, by Hamas militants, terrorists in that area, and they say that's why they had to fire back. They say that they had to go into that heavily, densely populated urban area because that's where Hamas was holding the hostages. Now, there is sort of dispute and over the number of people, civilians killed in that operation. The IDF says it's less than 100. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza, as you say, says about 270 people were killed and more than 700 injured. I think what's definitely clear is that there was a lot of collateral. A lot of people were killed, including civilians, including many children. We've seen images to back that up. We've heard from first-hand accounts from inside Gaza too. Tom, let's talk about that viral footage from the Nova Music Festival on October 7th. Uh, the video shows one of the now freed hostages, 26-year-old uh, Noah Argamani, uh, being taken from her boyfriend's side. She spent eight months in captivity, and again, now she is free. So uh, what do we know about the reaction from the Israelis? Have they responded? Well, look, the Israeli public uh, was celebrating on Saturday. This was a daylight operation. That was quite incredible. So I think, you know, there's a lot of gratitude. We're hearing it from the relatives of the hostages we've just spoken to and heard from at a press conference right here at this hospital. They're grateful to the IDF. They're praising them. The soldiers that went in in the middle of the day, only one Israeli policeman was killed in that operation. So from an Israeli perspective, the operation itself was a success. What's quite telling, I think, also, though, is how quickly the relatives speaking to us here have quickly tried to put the focus back on the remaining hostages in Gaza. We know that about 120 hostages, dead and alive, are still being held inside Gaza. Uh, we believe about 40 of them are thought to be killed, at least. Uh, you know, most Israeli people and a lot of people going out on the streets are now focusing on what next? What about those other hostages? And we are still seeing pressure on the Israeli government from the family members who spoke moments ago to bring the other hostages home and to get a deal, whatever the, well, not whatever the cost, but even if it means making concessions to Hamas. I also have to ask you about this recent announcement. Israeli Minister Benny Gantz announced his resignation from the country's war cabinet. How significant is this announcement? 
It's really significant internally, Eva. It doesn't mean that Netanyahu's government goes down because he still has a coalition, a majority in Parliament. Benny Gantz, though, was a central figure since October the 7th. He's a former political opponent of Netanyahu, but he went into the war cabinet, a sign of unity to bring the country together to face the threat in the wake of October 7th. His resignation from the government over time became more and more likely. It highlights the divisions here, political divisions and some divisions within society about the best solution and the best course of action now with respect to the war and with respect to striking a deal and trying to bring the hostages home. And Benny Gantz, we expect, uh, will meet Secretary of State Blinken here tomorrow. He was in Washington not long ago, also meeting members of the Biden administration. So Benny Gantz is on a more similar page policy-wise to the U.S. right now. It's interesting and a lot of developments still mm -hmm. shaking out here. ABC News foreign correspondent Tom Sufi-Burge, thank you so much for Tom, being with us. Tom, thank you.